Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about and showing you one of the most important things in nutrition and food and that's actually how to grow your own food. I can't emphasize at the beginning of this enough on how important it is for you to get into growing your own stuff and one of the most amazingly simple and powerfully nutritious things you can grow is sunflower greens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just within a few minutes give you the whole process by showing you exactly how easy it is to grow sunflower greens in your own garden in your own home. Even if you don't have a garden you can do this on a windowsill in your house. So you don't have to have a garden to grow your own food either. Sunflower greens are one of the most nutritious micro greens you can have. Now a sprout is a little seed that's just sprouted, but a microgreen is a sprout that's allowed to grow in soil for a couple of days. So what I'm going to show you today is how to quickly and easily set up a tray to grow sunflower greens for you. Now these are the sunflower greens on the table here. And the thing about them is they're around 30 times more nutritious than normal salad. And you can have one bowl of salad or you can have a tiny bowl of sunflower greens and those sunflower greens are going to give you the same if not more nutrients. That's what I'm talking about. It's how to eat less and get more. So that's why we want to eat sunflower greens. They are incredibly high in nutritional value. So let me go through the process of how to actually grow it. It's very easy to grow it. You only need a few things that you can get from most nurseries and they're all very inexpensive. So let me run through what I have on the table here. First thing you're going to get is some soil. This is organic seedling mix that I got from a nursery. I like seedling mix because it's fine so that the seedlings don't have to work very hard to get their roots into the ground and to get their little heads out of the soil. You can use compost too. Always make sure that it's organic though and they haven't used chemical fertilizers because those will burn the roots of your plants and they're not going to be happy. Next thing you're going to need are trays. Now these trays I got from a nursery and they're really inexpensive little black, black trays and you can buy a couple of those and have them on hand for whenever you want to grow sunflower greens. And then lastly you're going to need a base to catch the water in. And this base you can also get from nurseries but you can also get it at a lot of um, bigger shops. They do stock them. Now you can see these two fit quite nicely in the base and the reason I want the base is when I'm watering I don't want the water to flush all the nutrients out and away. I want the water to stay in the tray so that the greens can draw up the nutrients from the water and it's not all washing away. Lastly and maybe most importantly is the seed. You need to get some sunflower seeds. Now if you look at these sunflower seeds they still have the shell on them. Now what I found is that when they still have the shell on them they sprout a lot better. You don't have to have them once the shell on. You'll even see there are a couple in here that have been shelled already. They will sprout even if they are shelled. But I'd like to use the shelled ones because you just get more of them sprouting. Okay so how do we do this? The first thing you want to do is take your seed and Put that seed in water. You can use a glass jar, plastic tub, some kind of 
some kind of bottle about so big, put the seeds in there and then cover it with water and let it stand overnight. That's soaking the seeds so that it activates the seeds so the seed will sprout. Now you're gonna do that for about 12 hours, the soaking, sorry, and then once the seeds are soaked, wash the water away and then leave them damp in the same jar for another day around about. What you'll find is that a little tail is gonna come out of the end of the seed. Out of the end of the seed, you'll find the little tail growing and that'll tell you that you've got seed that will grow. And that'll also give the seed a head start for when you actually plant it into the soil. Okay. Now what this does is if you've got a whole bunch of seed and you put it all in the soil and you cover it all up and you got all that trouble and none of the seed sprouts because it's dead seed or it's irradiated seed, you've wasted a huge amount of time. So soaking it and sprouting it first is essential because it allows you to make sure that your seed will grow. So sprouting it like that, it's exactly the way that Joseph grows his sprouts with Kitchen Garden. And actually I use some of his big bottles to sprout my seeds. It's the best thing because you've got the mesh on top and it's easy to then drain the seed and pop it back on again. So definitely that's a great system to use to sprout your, your seeds before you're going to plant them. Okay, but now we want to get planting. Let's for a minute go, we've soaked the seeds, we've sprouted the seeds, the seeds are ready. Now how do we plant them? Get your trays lined up and then get your hands dirty. None of this little spade business. You need to get your vibes into the soil because the soil and the seeds want to know who's planting them. And then you're going to take your soil. You can see this is a nice, rich, dark seedling mix. And you're just going to take about a handful, handful at a time. And we'll do that on both, both trays. There we go. And then you just shake the tray up. So you get a nice even level. You don't put a baby to bed in a lumpy bed. You put them in a smooth made up bed. So you want to make sure your, your bed is smooth. Okay, next you'll take your seed. And your seed you're just going to put once again about a handful or so into the center. Now these haven't been soaked and sprouted yet. So remember you want to soak yours and sprout yours first. And then just with your hand spread them all the way around. Okay, what you're looking out for is about one layer of seed across. If you've got too many seeds on top of each other, they're going to compete for space. And if you've got too few seeds in there, you're not going to get a good crop. So you want to get it so you can see a little bit of soil sticking out, a few clumping on the side, but that there is space between the seeds. Okay, now the seeds are ready. So the next step, and this is a very important step that a lot of people actually leave out when they're trying to grow sunflower greens, and that is you need to cover your sunflower greens with soil again. And there are a couple of reasons why I do this, but the most important one is that if there are a couple of seeds that haven't sprouted, so they don't have the tail, if you don't cover them, what'll happen is they'll go moldy. And that mold can then spread and contaminate the rest of your crop and actually make your entire crop fail. So you wanna make sure it's covered with soil. Why does that stop the mold? There are bacteria in the soil that'll eat up all those moldy seeds so that they won't spread their mold into your actual crop. Okay, so you want about a handful again, about so much, and just cover it over the seed. You don't want to put too much on because otherwise they're going to have to work really hard to push through the soil, but just enough so you can't see the seed anymore. There we go, and the other one. Excellent. So if you have a look at that now, you can just see a few seeds. Most of them are hidden away, put, in, put away. When they're young like that, they don't want to get blasted by sunlight. So it's also a good idea to cover them with the soil for that reason. Now, what would you think the next most important thing would be to do? We've got our seed in the soil. It's sprouted. It's ready to grow. What is the next thing to do? Water. Got to water your seeds. Water is essential at this point. So grab your watering bucket or your watering can and lightly water them. It can soak through, but the important thing is you don't want to blast it with a hose pipe. You're just going to get all the seeds coming up and mixing through again. So lightly water everything. Now that will be one tray and you can have a really good salad out of about half of one of these trays. I mean, if you have a look at how this has grown, it becomes a huge mass of food. 
If you want to do this for a family or for yourself for a week, have a couple of these growing at one time. Start with say six or seven, and then when the first one is ready to eat, you can start on that one. By the time the end one is ready to eat, it's grown a little bit further, but that's absolutely fine. That way you can keep rotating and you only need to plant about once a month, maybe one, twice a month. I do it about every second week and then there's enough for, for my entire household to eat sunflower greens. Once you start eating sunflower greens, you'll absolutely never look back. They're absolutely delicious for a salad green and the nutrient value just makes you feel so good after eating them. Anyone who succeeds in a healthy lifestyle does so because they include high density, nutrient rich foods like this. Okay, so now we're gonna do the important step of watering. So I've just gotten a watering can. One of these will do absolutely fine. Fill that up with spring water and I'm just gonna run a light sprinkle of water over it. Remember, you don't want to blast the seeds with water. You're going to get them all to come out the soil and then you're going to have to cover them with soil again. So it's just a light sprinkling of water like so. There you go. A few of the seeds will rise if you haven't covered them, but most of them are covered completely. And if you're worried about it, just an extra little sprinkling will take care of all of that. There we go. Perfect. Now the amazing thing about nature is you just leave it and it grows and then it gives you food. There's nothing else you need to do. All I'd say you need to do on a daily basis, just give it a bit of water. Depending on how hot it is, once a day, maybe twice a day. Another important thing to remember is not to keep it in full sun all day long because it'll dry out very quickly in this black plastic container. So you want to keep it in a place where it gets half sun or maybe two hours of sunlight in a day, but no more than that. Water it once a day. It'll be ready for you to eat probably within around seven to ten days and you'll see all the greens coming up and growing out. The batch I have here is at around 14 days already and if you pull one of these out, you see how amazing they grow to a huge sprout. Look at the size of that. Now that's about perfect to eat and that you can just eat exactly as you'd eat lettuce or salad. It's absolutely delicious. Mm. Now, one thing to look out for when you're growing your sunflower greens, how do you know if they've gone too far, if they've grown too long? Simple way to tell is that there'll be a second leaf that comes out the center. Now when the second leaf comes out, this is quite bitter. So you can still eat the sprout at this point, but you want to really clip that leaf off so that you're left with just the two original leaves that grew. Now, these are the sweet tasty ones, but this is the bitter one. So leave that one out take that and then put that in your salad but it's absolutely usable even up to as much as three weeks after you've planted it excellent it's been amazing to be able to share how to make this with you i can't emphasize enough get growing sunflower greens the nutritional value you're going to get is phenomenal out of it oh before i forget there's an incredible way it's a secret way of making your sunflower greens hold more minerals than any other salad you can buy in the shops. How would you do that? It's one of the ultimate fertilizers ever discovered and it's almost free or it could be absolutely free. I'm so intrigued now. What I do is once they've grown out of the soil to so maybe about so high, just so you can see the green leaves, I take my watering can and I put two tablespoons of rock salt or sea salt into the water. Mix it through with the water and then water with a sea salt solution. Now sea salt has all 92 minerals in it that we need for nutrition. All the minerals we require. So once you water it, the, the roots which are now formed can actually absorb all those minerals that we need into them and you can eat this. So it's an incredible way of getting all those extra minerals into your diet without having to take supplements. So remember, one, maybe two tablespoons level of sea salt into about a five liter watering can. Mix that through and water that. Now in this situation, you can water every single day because the water's not leaking out. But if you've got a vegetable garden, you want to be careful because too much salt can actually damage certain plants. Sunflower green and also wheat grass is very happy with a lot of salt. So it's, it's pretty unlikely you're going to kill them. And I haven't yet and I've put a lot of salt in mine. So wheat grass is exactly the same way. The way we've just grown sunflower greens, grow wheat grass in exactly the same way. You get wheat seed instead of sunflower seed and the process is exactly the same. 
wheatgrass will grow up into grass, you'll cut it, you'll juice it, and you can have that as an incredible nutrient boost too. Excellent, well, that's about it. It's very simple. Buy the things. It's gonna cost very little money to get all the things together. Get making it, and you're gonna absolutely love this taste. Um, enjoy.